Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're consuming this podcast. Welcome to Ionisms, a simple, straight talk, slow burn podcast about society, art, entertainment, culture, pets, movies, little bit of geopolitics, and of course, our favorite cricket. Today's content is going to be a reflective, introspective content. We are going to talk about the series loss that Team India faced against New Zealand. I'm not going to talk about numbers the statistics and so many things that have happened but more talk about reflecting on some of the things that India team India could have done better mentally and we'll touch upon all the facets of the game so if this is something that floats your boat consider liking sharing and subscribing to this channel so let's jump right in like first up as a fan as um long standing fan of indian cricket the whole conversation the critique that happens here will be will, is coming from a place of well meaning passion it comes from a well meaning intent it, it's like a backhanded compliment if you will where you set the standard so high that sometimes you feel let down and that how is it possible that a team that has done so well in the preceding 1718 bilateral series suddenly is playing very different contradictory almost uh, cricket to that what the preceding series was so something has gone wrong something is missing and we're trying to analyze that but if any of the cricketing fraternity team is listening to this this is not a personal attack there will be no rhetoricals there will be no jingoism any any of that nonsense right it is merely out of concern it right? that how is it that we can do better it's very important to you know be with the team when they are low if you have celebrated the success and enjoyed reflective glory that of being world champions that of you know doing well then when you are not doing as well uh, we stand by you and so will we abandon you and look elsewhere answer is no of course we'll come back for the bgt and um, and, and, and you know re rekindle the hopes it's also important to understand where we stand today so let's dive in on that now try right? as people who have played a sport actively i can tell you this the two parts to it victory and defeat it's part of sport but when you win you analyze how you won the reason being then you can replicate that moving forward okay you know there are three things i did and i won and you replicate that and if you so are defeated if you lose then you dissect that defeat and say hey here are the three things that we did as a mistake and then fix that and if there is if, if you analyze the game like that then chances are you are upping the level of performance each passing game series match what have you as it turns out for this particular series it came off a big high after having defeated bangladesh comprehensively you took the game to the next level and then you lost in bangalore okay seeming conditions took a bold decision to play on a seeming a swinging conditions backfired you experimented to to think in your mind that probably perth will offer something you mistake number one there right you're already running ahead to the australia series while being present need was to be present and need to be present in the current uh, here and now but also reflects of a mindset that you were not probably taking new zealand to uh, to highly or you think or you were taking them too lightly and that's the impression we get from outside right otherwise you would have fixed it in test 2 saying okay this is a short test series world this is the business end of the uh, test championship wtc finals right and you cannot afford to take any team lightly you cannot afford to mess it up when it matters the most why because you've previously been plagued with that think of champions trophy finals think of odi world cup finals think of so many other uh, semi final defeats so you, you lose it when it matters the most while having played exemplary cricket right through but in bilaterals that was never the case you were comprehensively beating teams of the preceding Uh, 18 series, 4,331 days, and now add another whatever five more days, or three more days. The point is, 
why are we where we are today? And it's important to dissect that. So for, first part is, let's start with the skipper. And I'm, I'm not just talking about skipper the batter, I'm just talking about skipper from a captaincy standpoint. So you admit on a, in a post-match press conference, Mr. Sharma's conference was, yeah, I know how I played and I didn't come off well, so it's not looking, it's looking bad and it happens. And I also know when it is good, it will be good and things will be normal. I'm not so sure if that's the, that's the right way to approach it. And I'm not so sure that's the right answer. And you can give that benefit of doubt that you know, just after, it probably is not sunk in as hard as it will in a couple of days time. You know, instantly you're in front of camera and 30 people and you, you, you basically don't feel like going in front of the, the post-match conference and answer all these questions, especially when you are coming off of a terrible, humiliating defeat. And, and so I understand that. But as a skipper, you signed up for the role. And so you are expected to be a little more confident, a little more humble in the sense, you know, I know it's, it's a bit of an oxymoron. You're saying you be confident, you be humble. So how else do you uh, present defeat? Like if, if I were you, how would you have done it differently? Is what Mr. Sharma would be asking all of us that you're put in, in the press conference and somebody's asking you your first reactions of, of the defeat and, and so your mind goes back uh, to yes I played badly I took wrong decisions I take ownership of it is that not the right thing to say yes all tick box that that is the right thing to say you can't shift blame on anybody but somewhere that's also not the right thing to say you know what I'm trying to think is people understand that you make a mistake once you can't have it done thrice and that's where even at these press conferences, I've always said, why are we never asking the tough questions, even in victory? Even in victory, why are we not asking tough questions? There were batting collapses earlier as well. And, and we have managed to turn it around where Mr. Uh, Mr. Patel Akshar uh, and Mr. Um, Ravjandran Ashwin have bailed us out. Or Mr. Jadeja has bailed us. The lower order batters, mid to mid lower order batters have bailed us out. We've kind of covered everything off like, okay, that's fine. So what? At least we have won. And, and so even in those press, pressers, press conferences, it is imperative to ask tough questions as to why this is happening consecutively, repetitively, at will. Now, coming to Mr. Sharma's batting ability, yeah, you can go through a high phase and a low phase. It's, it, it's fair. What, what, it, what it doesn't sit well with me that... You're going with a predetermined template approach, something which the English team tried and failed. It's a live example. It's a recent, it's not like it happened 50 years ago. It happened last year. It, Baz Ball has spectacularly failed and crashed. And so you are exactly doing the same, all in the under the name of playing good cricket. You want to put pressure back on the bowler, you want to show intent. Yeah, but it cannot be reckless, restless cricket. It's like Either you go absolute reckless or you be absolutely negative. No, that's there is a mid path too. Why are you not following common sense mid path street smart cricket? Is what is is baffling and nobody is asking that question. Like is anybody saying you should not dominate the bowling? Yes, but when you know they are going to bowl short so that you hook or pull, there's a square leg fielder positioned exactly for that, and the match situation is tricky. Why would you not delay that shot? Why? Why would I mean think of this match, right? You had 150 runs to win, you had 180 overs to go, arguably day three, day four, day five, or more, actually, now that I think of it. You could have done it in singles. Like take one run and over, and you could have done this over 150 overs. Are you trying to tell me the if, if you if you doubt your batting ability that as arguably the top batters globally? you will not be able to make one run and over for 150 overs is something, then, then something's wrong. I can understand you can't do it in 20 overs and you should not given that this is a test match cricket. Your batters are not able to sustain a session of play. Yes, it's a difficult pitch. Yes, it's a turning pitch. It's a turning pitch for both teams. How are you scoring worse off than a visiting team? It defies logic. It defies... I don't know, it, it defies a whole bunch of things. So yes, so there is a balanced, street smart, 
cognitive ability cricket game as a skipper you are expected to be agile you are expected to be flexible you came with an intent to play aggressive cricket and put uh, them on the back foot but then you realize that ah this is probably i have to respect the bowler i have to respect the hour of play as cricketers as test cricketers we have to be switched on at the right times now the first hour of play the period before lunch the period just after lunch the period after drinks and of course the last hour of play these are the four peak periods hot periods when concentration wavers and the fundamental breaking news the prerequisite to play test cricket is to have 90 overs of concentration intact now is it easy no but you signed up for it you practice for it you probably meditated for it you have support staff to help you get that mindset what else do you need what do you need to reset that mind and if you're not doing it because your uh, the spare time of cricket is caught up with functions and endorsements and everything you're kind of mixing the story up because the the functions the endorsements are happening because the play on the field not the other way around you're not getting cricket matches because you did more endorsements you're you're getting more endorsements because you played really well and if the fundamental root cause is impacted then all of this will go away right i'm sure mr sharma understands that but for the next generation of cricketers somebody needs to put that sense into their heads right that the baton is now it's not to be passed it's now you would think of the common uh, workplace scenario how do you get promoted when you start when you start demonstrating skill sets of the next level that you are ready for the next level you are ready to be promoted you do it in the current role it's not like when i become uh, a permanent player then i do i i display you get an opportunity you score and you score comprehensively you people understand how you scored the runs as well right so as a batter and, and so, so whether it's mr gill mr deswal trying the reverse um uh, uh, reverse sweep completely against the run of play is lack of match awareness the match awareness temperament and that's where the coaching staff comes in like yes it can happen once in a test but can't happen twice thrice you know he is got an out throwing his wicket away in the name of intent that is a wrong approach that is a deadly dangerous approach you can play aggressive cricket without being reckless about it i don't know why is nobody talking about it now so mr sharma's batting ability scoring abysmal whatever 100 odd runs over, over the last uh, year year and a half is it a cause for concern yeah because what is the expectation from the top batter that you perform when it matters when it doesn't matter and you score a great century a great 100 or something people are going to say yeah well okay theek hai i mean it's, it's all right but the expectation is that you do well when it matters and unfortunately we haven't seen that from mr sharma he doing well at crunch moments that's when opposition respects you even more and you do it for the team right if you don't do it as a skipper then who will who will manage that right uh, let's move on to mr uh, kohli mr kohli is uh, you know the icon of uh, indian cricket and there is a whole bunch of um, energy passion philosophy and all all, all things wrapped in, in with him but somewhere if the burnout has gotten to the mind it is very difficult to reignite the same level of concentration fitness is not an issue for him which might be the issue a little bit of an issue with mr sharma do but not an issue with uh, uh, mr kohli but it is it is a known fact that once you cross 34 35 in the sport that we play the hand eye coordination goes down so you fall back on some of the basics you curb your instincts you curb so you don't go 3 foot forward and play away from your body you play closer to your body play a tighter game so you curb your natural instincts you grind it out you do a ala pujara you know people have mocked mr pujara for taking 42 deliveries to score the first run what is wrong with that you know blocking it out grinding the bowler out is also a counter punch it's also a strategy which the opposition is not prepared for 
opposition is thinking if i bowl five deliveries outside the sixth stump mr kohli is bound to go for a booming cover drive and nick one and get out how many times has that happened how many times they have brought on a spinner knowing that mr kohli is going to get either lbw or bold trying to play a cross bat shot to a ball that he needed to play straight so when opposition has figured that out why play into that is what baffles me right why couldn't you outmind i don't know that's a word outplay what they are laying the trap for you or are you not able to get it that is a bigger worry and that's where the coaching staff kicks in M mr uh, gautam gambhir i don't know how how much of a great co strategic coach he has been yes he has won uh, an ipl title or two but as a player was he a tactical genius as, uh, did he display great man management capability i don't know from an outsider standpoint perspective i don't know can he do a better job i'm guessing i don't know how he's going to turn around his team right now and lift them up and what what, what do you do do you acknowledge defeat and say you sucked and you, i sucked as a coach and i did a terrible job or do you just brush it off and say ah forget it it's a one off bad aberration we'll turn up to perth now if they win all five test matches in australia even then this defeat is inexcusable right test that's why it's a test match i can understand it's a t20 lottery hit or miss giggle whatever but for a test match there is no hiding there is no hiding it's everything is out in the open everything is by design by plan there's no fluke you you, the, you let the opposition play better they got to your mind and then you couldn't handle the pressure and come back was the reality so what was the coaching staff doing to diffuse this especially with the younger younger uh, batters like mr jaiswal mr gill uh, mr safraz uh, mr sundar some of the near newer relatively newer and they they have been playing in the circuit for a while so they don't feel as you know mint fresh new like say previous generation cricketers would have but what are they doing to calm them down right i, I don't see that in the field now when it comes to the other players think of uh, mr rishabh pant now I, i read a tweet somewhere he said you know he's like marvelous once in a generation cricketer and like before he has really done something to be a once in a generation cricketer don't snowball him into a bubble which he starts to believe that he's invincible it's okay to encourage it's okay to be positive it's okay to give a pat on the back and clearly we come from a generation where we have been under confident right under playing under selling whatever that we could but this generation you you're taking it to the other extreme again that, that look is he a good cricketer yes does he have got the street smarts yes does he have talent yes but has he achieved greatness no the number of times he's thrown away his wicket when he was so close not just to say steering the team to victory or steering the team out of trouble or even to some of his personal milestones reflective of the number of times he's gotten out on the 90s is inexplicable right so somewhere yes you're not measuring him by centuries but dude it's about the mind that you, you know that you're in your 90s you're to grind out a little bit and doesn't mean you take you know 55 overs to cross from 90 to 100 but yeah take 5 overs maybe 7 overs if you're in test cricket take that that do this do it by the singles and and it's a mental resilience conversation you want to dominate but you don't need to be reckless about dominating you know so that's what is is needed for mr pant he needs to be guided and coached and encouraged for sure he's come from a very difficult situation in life life has been very kind to him that he's able to stand up play run the sport all over again and so you want him to value his uh, his position his situation a little bit more than what he gives the impression of i mean we haven't spoken to him so clearly we don't know much and that leaves us with the bowling lot right uh, clearly mr bumra does what he does very little to comment but in his mind if he is thinking of being the next potential captain is going to be the vice captain for australia then somewhere he has to start advising mr sharma about the tactical changes on the field the not letting the game drift and trying to you know control it 
try out something different if this is not working if one bowler is getting belted maybe change the field try something different do something that has not been done before show your presence is what i would say no doubting your talent ability and whatever that you've done I, i would say that you are one of the cricketers that you know people would pay extra money to come watch bowl which i cannot say for the preceding generation right up till say i'd probably pay money to watch kapil dev bowl again <laughs> but that's a compliment right and and leaves us with uh, mr uh, jadeja mr um, ashwin they did what they could with what they had or what they have and they've gone above and beyond and so many times over they have saved the situation even if you go back to that mcg match with uh, against pakistan imagine in the heat of the moment the pressure mr ashwin understands that this ball is drifting down the leg he leaves that ball that that is unbelievable right huge uh, presence of mind is required but can he be counted each and every time and you've not been fair to him periodically right sometimes you've dropped him sometimes you're not included in i know you messed up his cricketing rhythm you know career rhythm if you will and to his credit he's not made too much noise about it he's gone about his job doing it and that's probably the right thing to do with mr uh, jadeja he is clearly again uh, as young as he looks there is a fatigue factor in the mind he is arguably your you know best fielder yet and uh, he does his bit is improving his bit with the with the bat and of course uh, with the ball he is he's a gun bowler right so this combination was working well until you disrupted with kulcha right and then you didn't continue with kulcha you, you left them out. so all of these things and i don't want to keep harping on on the past but all of these inconsistencies sometimes break the team culture fabric that how do you then go list as one team and grow and build maybe one player keeps rotating or two players is fine but eight or 10 always remain the same and so that's what i would think and that leaves us with mr akash deep and mr siraj uh mr akash deep of whatever little i have seen can do a good job if he's taken to fourth and allowed to bowl can be a good first change um, clearly missed mr shami uh, on on uh, on this tour maybe other turning pitches but i'm thinking mr shami in, in the bangalore pitch would have wreaked havoc but nevertheless um once we get to the bgt we'll talk about it then but mr siraj also needs a break like from a mental standpoint hard worker works high on passion is a very you know big hearted bowler my fear is he shouldn't get reduced to like how mr ishan sharma went you know he started with a bang a lot of you remember the ricky ponting um dismissal is you know very fresh in our minds keep Uh, how he set him up and got him dismissed but then over the years he went off the boil a little bit right and so my worry with mr siraj is that that he, how do you keep him fresh mentally and keep his hunger alive that he has to do go over and above and beyond so that's the long and short of it i i thought you know as fans like i said at the top of the conversation we will continue to back the team no matter what but it is also very important for the team to reflect answer tough questions why is the grinding not there why are we not appreciating what mr pujara and mr rane brought to the table just a couple of years back it's not too far away it's a style yes you don't want to include them in the future scheme of things that's fair but then you cannot have such results where the need of the hour was to smother the spin finally the pitches clearly you are misreading the pitches misdesigning the pitches who's asked you to do that if the team think tank has asked you to do that and they should stand up and apologize to the nation like okay too bad we screwed up in the odi world cup we screwed up in the in the tv tour um, and so who are these people who are advising designing and if the skipper is doing that consistently wrong then he should be called out for it as well and so i find it extremely strange that whatever your strength is you're not building on that strength you know what what's wrong with a slightly uh, flat track which turns on the fourth and the fifth day are you not able to make such pitches i doubt that you know let the batter score as much let them score 500 and you can reply by 600 and then the third and fourth day your spinners kick in and then bowl them out that's been the formula i don't know when it has changed to making rank turners remember the 
uh, Ahmedabad test where the day the test ended in two days, like or thereabouts, right? That's not the test match. Uh, that's not the match you want. That's not the result. Even if you are on the winning side, it's not reflection of of your true potential. And so, globally, there is a reputation that India carries, right? And you want to maintain that reputation. You want to show them that you are the best. And you are the best without any doubt. And in such defeats, in the manner of defeats, you are denting that confidence. And as far as World Test Championship is concerned, I am guessing you can kiss it goodbye, realistically. Highly unlikely that we are going to get 5 wins or 4 wins and 1 draw. Very unlikely. But uh, reset. You know, shit happens, let it pass, reset, restart, so that the next WTC you are there, right at the top. Until then, stay calm, stay focused, take a deep breath and uh, what shall I say, regroup and uh, we'll see you in BGT again. Thanks for listening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to Ionism's Simple Straight Talk podcast and if you did like this kind of content, if this is what floats your boat, to consider subscribing, sharing and liking to similar people. Until we meet the next time, my name is Ayan and you are listening to Anisms. Peace out.